I think the easiest way to understand the service container is not to tell you what it is, but rather to show you where it's located, how you can access it, and some of the things it can do. And then from there, you can use your own simple words to define it. How does that sound? Great, let's get started. Here I have a fresh Laravel application. And instead of returning a view, I'm going to die and dump the app helper function. When I refresh the page, we get an application object, which is an instance of the application class in Illuminate Foundation namespace. Let's go to that class. If you go to vendor, Laravel, Framework, Source, Illuminate, Foundation, we have the application class and it's extending the container. Let's go to the container. And this class is our service container. And since the application is extending the container, it means that you can be able to access the container via the application. Let's prove that. So I'll go to the container and here we have a property called bindings, which is an array. And since it's protected, it means we cannot be able to access it from outside the class. We need a method that is public. And when you scroll down, you'll see that you have this get bindings method that is returning the bindings. So let's try and use this method from the app helper function. I'll go back to web and then here I'll call that method. Back to the browser, then I'll refresh and here we get the bindings array. So it's working. Now we know how to, we know where to locate the container and we know how to access it. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how does the container work? What does it do? And one of, the, one of the things that it does is that it allows us to add services into the container. And by services, it's usually classes, but it can be any data that you want. So let's create a very simple service and add it to the container to see how this works. So I'll go to the editor again. Then here in app, I'm going to create a folder called services. And then I'm going to create a simple service called calculator. Calculator.php. And I'm going to create a very simple service. So it's just a calculator class. It has an add method that takes two numbers and then you, it just returns the sum of those two numbers. And that's it. So our service, it's, uh, we are, it's a service that is used to calculate the sum of two numbers. Simple. Now let's add it into the service container. I'll go back to web, then use the app function to access the container. And when you go to the container, there is a method called bind. And that's the method we use to add a service into the container. You can refer to it, uh, to refer to it as adding a service or storing a service, any can do. So this bind method ex, um, expects two arguments. And the first one is the key that you want to use for your service. It can be any string that you want, but the best practice is to use the fully qualified class name. So in our case, to get the fully qualified class name, we'll just say calculator, then class. And that will give us the fully qualified class name. The second argument is a function. And in this function, we are supposed to return an instance of the service that we are adding into the container. So I'll just say return new, and that is a calculator. And that's it. That's how you add a service into the container. Let's confirm that. And before you confirm, let's switch to back to the browser. I didn't mention this. When you add something into the container, it gets added in the bindings array. So now that we've added something, it should be added in this array. And since we have 50, when we refresh, it should be 51 and it is 51. And when you scroll to the bottom of the list, you'll see that our calculator um, service is added. Now that we've added a, 
a service into the container. Another thing that the container allows us to do is that we can retrieve the service in our application and use it. So let's do that. Back here, we want to retrieve that service and use it. So instead of die and dumping the method, what you're going to do is that you're going to retrieve a service. How do we do so? If you go to the container, there is another method called make. And that make um, expects one argument, and that is the key that you've used in the container. And in our case, this was our key. So I'll grab that, and I'll just paste it here. And by just doing that, um, the container will resolve or will retrieve that service from the container. And now from here, we can use our service. We can just say add. Then let's just add one plus one. And let's see if this works. So if I switch back and refresh, and it works, we have two. Now, there's something interesting that um, we are about to see. Check this out. If I come here and I comment this out, and then I save, which means now we are not binding anything into the service container. And if you want, you, ca you can confirm. You can die and dump the get bindings method, and you'll see that the services are 50, and the calculator service is not being added. But if we do so, and go back to the browser, and refresh, whoa, it still works. What is happening? So this is exactly what is happening. The service container will first check, does the... Um, the key with this fully qualified class name exists in the container and of course it doesn't. So if it doesn't, it will check the path app services calculator. Is that a class that I can instantiate? And if that is positive, the service container will automatically resolve or retrieve that service for us. And that's why this is working. Now you might be wondering, if the service container can retrieve can automatically resolve services from the container for us, then why do we need to bind a service into the container? Good question. And the answer is because there are some instances where the service container will not be able to do that for us automatically. And I'll show you that. So I'll go to the calculator class and here I'm going to create um, a constructor. So public function, And I am going to pass a string. I'm going to say a string. And say this is a string, and I'll call it name. Now, if I refresh, let's see if that works. If I come back here and refresh, no, it doesn't. Binding resolution exception. So the service container was not able to automatically resolve it for us. Therefore, something that I want you to note is that if you have a constructor in the class and the constructor has something that is not a concrete class, and by a concrete class, I mean a class that can be directly instantiated. If it is not a concrete class, the service container will not be able to automatically resolve it for you. So in that case, you need to bind it into the service container. So if I come back here and bind this, and then have uh, the name here. Just say the name is me. And pass it here. Then go back to the browser and refresh, and that works. I'll switch back. Then I'll redo this to what it was. Go back to the calculator. So we said that if this is not a concrete class, it will not work. But then we said if it's a concrete class, it will work. So let's see. Let's try a concrete class and see if it will work. So I'll use the user model. So this is a concrete class because you can create an instance of a user model. Then save. So note that now we are not binding it into the container, but we are using a concrete class. So if I switch back to the browser and refresh, it works. And by the way, this is what we call dependency injection. And, and dependency injection is just a 
fancy phrase um, a fancy phrase that means injecting a class into another class via constructor so we are injecting a user class into the calculator class via the constructor and this is made possible because of the service container and this is something that you'll often use in laravel and it's possible because of the service container now the service container allow also allows us to do something cool instead of doing this we can type hint the service so i can just come here and say calculator and then just use it die and dump calculator use the method which is add then let's add um, one plus one we need a semicolon at the end then back to the browser refresh and it still works and if you ask me this is cleaner and it looks good so when you type you type hint this the service container will still automatically resolve it for us and this is something another another thing that you will often use in laravel and it's made possible because of the service container and that's it for the service container if you want to learn more about it please check out the documentation and um just a side note whenever we bind something into the container we don't do it in the routes file we do it in something called the service provider and that's what we are going to cover in the next lesson see you there cheers